Well, what better place to talk about Al Hirschfeld than the Algonquin Roundtable? And I'm here with David Leopold, and you have compiled an amazing book of the man's work. Well, thank you. I, uh, the book covers, it's just his theater drawings from the last 40 years of his career, 1962 to 2002. And it's the largest book of theater drawings of Hirschfeld's that's ever been published. Why now? Why now? Why not now? Uh, it was a project that he and I discussed uh, just before he passed away and uh, obviously when he died we put it on the shelf and for a variety of reasons we couldn't get to it till now. We've had other projects that we've been doing but it just seemed the right time because um, people have been asking for it for years and we had an exhibition at the Museum of Broadway and we wanted to have it out for that. Um, and it's also the anniversary, uh, it's the 20th anniversary since his last drawing and 60th anniversary from the first drawing in this book. What made you decide to confine it to Broadway and to this time period? Uh, in 1961, Al Hirschfeld uh, published a book, uh, American Theater, as seen by Hirschfeld, which uh, gathered up his best drawings from the first four decades of his career. And it was a book he was very proud of. He, he picked the pieces, he designed it himself, uh, didn't put page numbers or an index, which I used to give him grief about. And it's a really important work. I mean, we, Hirschfeld did so many things, you know, uh, movies and TV and music and dance. You know, it's a much shorter list of who he didn't draw. But when you think of Hirschfeld, you think of theater. You think of Broadway. There's a very good reason why, Her why there's a Broadway theater name for him, because his drawings w for three quarters of a century were as much a part of uh, the opening of a show as opening night. Have you been in touch with his daughter, Nina? Oh, sure. I talk to Nina fairly frequently on the phone, and uh, his widow, Louise Hirschfeld, is a great supporter of all the things that we're doing. Um, and we're very fortunate. You know, uh, Nina is sort of with us all the time because, you know, any drawing after 1945, almost all of them have Nina's in them. And we're always talking about that. Uh, two years ago, we celebrated the 75th anniversary of the first Nina. And uh, it's great now when we send the book to her grandchildren who are as excited to learn about their uh, great-grandfather as anybody would be. You're in the house with Hirschfeld's great works. There's a fire. You can save four. Which do you grab? Well, that would be a very, very hard decision. I, I'm, I don't look at things in terms of favorites. Uh, I thought that, oh, we're going to be able to put in about 300, a little bit more uh, in this new book. And I thought, that's going to be easy. Well, you know, and it turned out it was very hard. You know, when you only had 50 drawings from a decade, I thought that would be plenty, and it turns out it's not. I, I could have done another 50 from any decade, and you'd want to see it. You know, it, his drawings, there's a uniformity in how good they are. They're not the same. You know, Hirschfeld, you know, the, the, the double-edged sword of u ubiquity is, because, you know, his drawings were everywhere, was that if he was doing the same drawing all the time, he wouldn't be everywhere. They're always fresh and they're always different. I would probably pick the four closest to me, uh, but uh, what I would probably be doing is, how many more could I get in my hands? Why do I only have four? You know, they're they're you know they're they're not that heavy. I could I could take more. <laughs> and will there be more? Do you anticipate more books in the future? Oh sure. We're, we're, we're working out, uh, we're negotiating deals with several publishers right now. Um, believe it or not, there have been 12 collections of Hirschfeld's uh, work uh, that have been published, and it still just scratches the surface. When you go to our website, alhirschfeldfoundation.org, um, you can look up everything he ever did. And we have over 7,000 images on there, uh, and that means we still have about 3,000 more to go. I've been looking at his work since I was a child, probably like both of us. Uh, I've been looking at it professionally for more than 30 years. Uh, I knew him very well. I spent uh, 13 years visiting him in his studio at least once a week. Uh, I hold the record for the most free lunches at the home of Al Hirschfeld. And one would think that I would sort of get a little jaded about seeing the drawings now, and I don't. 
they still thrill me. I mean, really thrill me. I get excited. People I work with uh, uh, are like, David, don't look at the drawings right now because you'll get lost. You know, I still find them very, very fascinating. And what's amazing to me is we're of a certain age. So, of course, we have looked at the drawings for a long time. But young audiences today are really no different than we were when we were seeing the drawings for the first time. Except when we were seeing the drawings for the first time, they were for shows that were opening right now. They look at the drawings sort of like we look like Toulouse-Lautrec. Um, you know, I'm sure his drawings and posters of Jane Avril were really accurate, you know, really captured the essence of her. And people at the time said, boy, he really got her. But we don't look at them today for that documentary information. We look at them for their aesthetics. And young audiences today look at Hirschfeld's drawings for that same reason. And, they, and it's very satisfying to them. And finally, he was famous for doing all his work in a barber chair. Did you ever get to sit in it? Oh, sure. I sat at the barber chair. Uh, and we have one that's identical to the one that he sat in at the Museum of Broadway in the, in the special exhibition they have on Hirschfeld. Um, you know, he thought it was the last functional chair because it went up and down, it swiveled, and it could turn into a Shea lounge. Uh, uh, I'm amazed that Hirschfeld spent a lifetime in a barber chair and he still had a lot of hair. You know, he just... Uh, 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 but yes, I, I not only sat in it, I've carried it around. Uh, uh, we've joked about it. it. You know, I had a really great relationship with him. You know, really fun.